subscribe to my channel you guys are at a different angle so i hope that i can uh do it right <laughs> but my phone's gonna die and i have it plugged in on this side and so i have to have like you know plus it's snowing and so yeah maybe i'll insert a picture here of what it looks like outside but it very rarely snows here it snowed once last year all year and that was this winter it's the same winter that it's now snowing again right now why do i have a line on my my eye right here i guess i'm getting old let me, let me open this curtain right here and see if that helps at all i don't know we're still rolling it so my name is amy and this is a channel about crafting mostly cross stitch lately but we're still crafting um i did start the diamond painting from the other day uh i don't think it has a name actually but it's the one my review video for victoria's moon so that's up if you guys want to watch that i'm letting my hair dry which is why that sounds stupid because you put it in a clip and it doesn't dry right today's valentine's day um but i realized that um i should have posted my floss tube probably yesterday and i haven't even recorded it yet so maybe we can work through this quickly enough um let me arrange a little bit i realized that i should have done this before but i didn't the story of my life so um last let's see there's a date on this Last week or so, I got this package in the mail, and I had no idea who it was from until I went to, I was scrolling on Facebook, and I was like, oh, duh. So, before Christmas, I signed up for a, um, what's it called, like a gift card exchange for, through the Witchy Stitcher Facebook group. She does like a card exchange every year I guess or they did it the year before and they did it again this year I don't know but I did it and so one of the girls sent me a card very late um and her band her band-aid her card looks like this and it says this year let love heal our hearts and it's a heart with a band-aid on it oh my god it's so cute um and the inside just says with love Ruth and she sent this cute little felt stocking kit so you're gonna hear my kids in the background just warning um, it's snowing so the dogs can't be outside. My son's dog is an outside dog and she's causing havoc. Um, anyway. This felt cross stitch kit is so cute. I think, honestly, I'm going to let my daughter do it. Because it's small and doesn't look like it requires a lot of stitching. And it looks like there's glue dots for the other things. So we'll probably hot glue it or some other glue it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll give that to her so I don't even know what she's doing okay so last week's floss tube I left a couple of projects out and I'm going to show you guys those projects right now even though I haven't worked on them um I don't think I'm going to do any life updates nothing's changed still going to school still have kids <laughs> nobody's sick nobody has COVID thank god everybody's healthy you know so one of the projects, we had a blocker in the kitchen living room area because she's just causing too much hell. Okay, Harry Potter book covers. I have not showed this to you guys in quite some time. Um, this is what it looks like. It's from Fox and Teacup Designs. Um, I am not doing it by book. I'm just doing it by page like, I'm not, like I would do any other full coverage. Um... It's too much work to do it by book because this is across at least four pages. Um, and I'm not going to do that. So this is where I'm at. I haven't worked on it lately, but I did keep it out for a long time. And I did work on it consistently for a long time. So since you guys have seen this last, I've picked up, I mean, I've done a lot of work on it. And my thing is getting so freaking dirty. Um, but it's full coverage and so that's why I'm not as worried about it as I would be. But this is how much I've gotten done. Isn't it looking very nice? There's a few like discrepancies in the charting that I wouldn't have done 
if I charted this, which I guess with full coverage it's a lot harder to do, but like in these letters here, there's pink, and I don't feel like that has any place in it, but, and I when I was stitching it, I was thinking like, what is the purpose of this hair? Why is this hair? And I should have went with my gut and just changed that pink out to be the silver that the bulk of the letter is, and I didn't. Um, but you can't really, you can see it like up close, but most people are going to be looking at it probably from like here. And so I feel like it looks fine, but from there on out, if there's any like weird coloring in the letters, I'm just going to stitch it with the main color of the letters that doesn't look weird. Um, but I am so happy with the way this is coming out and I can't wait to get it out again. I've just been... This year I really want to work on a lot of my full coverage pieces, and so um, this is still out. I just haven't worked on it in probably two weeks, but it's it's one of my very favorite pieces. Did I tell you it was from Fox and Tea Cut Designs on Etsy? And I'm stitching that two over two on 28 count, even weave, and I absolutely love it. Um, the next thing that I did not show you guys, I haven't worked on this recently either but at least in the past two weeks as well when I'm working on my Harry Potter piece this tends to shift into my full coverage piece I mean that doesn't make any sense I was looking for this the other day though this tends to shift to my travel piece so this is um Halloween at Hawkorn Hollow and I started here in the center and I'm trying to get this box done, but it is kicking my ass. And I hate to admit that I did lose a little bit of steam on it just because it's so big stitching that box. But this is what I have done so far. I got really tired stitching the switch, but I went ahead and finished her anyway. The only thing that's missing is for some reason I don't have this yellow hair. So I do need to pick that up or I'm going to maybe just substitute it because I keep forgetting about it. Um, here, I don't know why I didn't stitch the inside of that pumpkin. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to have to look and see if maybe I just forgot or maybe I don't have that color, but I have most of the colors for it anyway. This cauldron's almost done, not quite. You can tell here I'm still, I still have the silver on my um, needle where I need to come in and finish the cauldron part. And then I'll start working on this other witch. And this here, all of the border's not done yet. I'm doing half stitches and then I'm doing a full X every 10, so it's easy to count. But I wanna finish everything here before I move the Q-snap over to do the other witch. And hopefully I can do her a lot faster. But I love the way it's coming out. I'm stitching this on 32 count Shadow Lugana from Be Stitch Me. And I'm doing this two over two as well. And I, mm, I'm stitching it in the called for. It was one of them that I subbed Fancy Gloss for, but I don't know which project that was. Okay. So let's move on to whips. I've been working on my heartstring sample repiece for Amy, and I don't want to show it because it's um, a surprise. I do have, I did tell her what I was stitching it on. This is 16 count earthen Ada from Picture This Plus. I just happen to have a big cut of it left from my, I bought it off D-Stash. And I'm stitching, I'm stitching the Harry Potter cutting cross stitch piece on the other half. So I had this piece cut off and I split this in two and I'll show you what I'm doing with the other piece here in a minute. And so I just, you know, I figured, you know what, this is a good color. It matches both these projects. I'm just going to use it because I don't particularly like this Ada. I don't know if all of Pictures is plus Ada is like this, but it's so soft and like floppy. And I feel like the threads are just weak. Um, I don't know. I don't know what their process is. I feel like maybe the Ada is overworked and that's why it's so soft, but it just makes the Ada feel weak to me. I don't like that. So, yeah, I feel like if I show you guys 
the back I, I thought is like oh, I'll just show them the back but I feel like it'll give it away so that's all I'm going to show you guys from that because I don't want to um give it away when I'm done and she receives it I will show you guys because I subbed all the colors because um, I didn't have any of the called for because it's done in all weeks dye works and I have a very limited amount of weeks and so yeah I actually worked on that a lot yesterday so yeah and then this week I only have one other whip that's it yeah I guess that's it um quarantine caps by Bridget Ashwood charted by Heaven and Earth Designs kind of hard to see but these two skeins I actually had doubles I need to pull those out and put those in my my stash so this year I'm also trying to save all of my threads which isn't like you know too well because I've already misplaced a bunch of them um I don't know if I showed you guys my start but I've got in about <sighs> 500 stitches this week which isn't anywhere near what I'd like to get in you guys are a little bit lower than I normally have you so it's hard to show you guys my stuff um but yeah if you go to my Instagram you'll see um the progress photos of this and then these here are threads that I need to cut off that don't come up again anywhere in this section that I'm working so what I'm trying to do is actually finish these two rows that I have here, uh, let me see, 1,200 stitches here, um, because it's two rows of six, it's going pretty quick, I had no idea what I'm saying because my kids and the dogs, but, um, yeah, so I want to finish those stitches, my thing is that when I have a full coverage piece is that I like to sit and essentially get a thousand stitches done on it just because I know how much progress a thousand stitches can be and most I'd probably say like 95% of my heaven and earth design projects are all done 10 stitch and so it's half the work essentially and if I can do a thousand stitch increments I can get them done faster except that I never, I don't have that much time to sit down and stitch that long, but it is what it is, you know. It's coming along, and you can see progress. I started this this year um, on New Year's. This was my New Year New Start um, with Sassy Fiber Arts and Sprinklestein. Um, and then I'm stitching this on 28 count Brittany Lugana, the pre-gridded kind, with the 100 by 100, well, or 10 by 10 blocks, which is 100 stitches. So, there's that piece. That's what was on my Lowry um, this last week is what I attempted to sit down and do, which I only did it for two days. The first day, I think I only got 150 stitches. The second day, I got 334, I think it was. So, okay, we had to put up chairs so that she couldn't get out because she just causes freaking hell no matter what she does. <sighs> okay. So... I have one more whip because it's a new start as well. I fully kitted up um, mini farewell to anger. And I've talked about this before. This is what it looks like. It's another heaven and earth design, but it's a mini. And it's one of my favorite pieces by Leonid Afromov. Um, 2020 was a year when... I really learned to let a lot of things go, a lot of things that are bothering me, and still to this day, like, it still kind of affects me, and a lot of what I'm talking about makes absolutely no sense to you guys, but it's part of the reason why I decided to, I used to be in the pre-nursing program when I first started going back to school. Years ago, I started out working as a CNA, which is a nursing assistant, I went to school for that, became a nursing assistant and worked at a hospital, a long-term care facility um, where I worked with Alzheimer's and dementia patients. I worked there for almost three years. And in, I don't know, when we, we moved around a lot and then when we came back to where we live now, um, I decided to go back to school because it was nearing the time, I think my youngest was two 
and she was going to start school in a handful of years. So I thought, you know, I can go to school part time and it not be an issue. I had to close my door because I realized how long my kids were being. <laughs> so anyway, um, my youngest was getting ready to go to school and I thought, you know, I could go to school part time until she goes to kindergarten. Then I could really go to school full time. That's essentially what I did. And somewhere along there, when I was just getting ready to start taking like the real nursing classes, I was like, I don't like this. I don't like what I'm doing. I don't like what I'm studying. I'm not passionate about it. Um, I got two C's in my coursework because I my heart just wasn't into it. And so I ended up changing my major to psychology. This was in... Um, 20 what year did I graduate I got my associates in 19 and then I got my bachelor's in 20 um so I guess the end of 2018 is when I decided to change my major to psychology and then I just started blowing through my courses the bachelor program after you get your associates to bachelor is about a two 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 year two and a half year program depending on how many classes you take i finished it in a year and a half and so which is why i graduated in 2019 and then i graduated again in 2020 and so it looks really weird um you know now i'm in my master program and i feel so much better about what i'm studying what i'm doing all of that kind of thing and it's also taught me a lot of things about forgiveness and letting certain things go and things like that and I feel like it's really shaped I feel like 2020 is the year where I figured out who I was um which is why I really like this piece farewell to anger so I fully kitted this up I did print the chart out and right now I'm doing it off the paper chart because that's how I like to do um minis because I actually prefer paper charts and I did start it so <laughs> I'm doing this on 18 count Ada for many reasons one being it's a mini and it allows me to use the 18 count and two being I didn't have anything else that would work on this I get tired of working on 28 count and 25 count and 32 count and so I wanted something simple and all I had was this green there's no white in this um there's a little bit of 3865, but it's not a dominant color in this chart at all. That's like in the light post and the lamps here. And I thought, you know what? I don't think it's going to affect the colors at all. It's a full coverage piece if I stitch it on this piece of green Ada, because when else am I going to use this piece of green Ada? This came in the stash that Amy sent me um, last year when she, I was getting a box from her like every other week of crafty goodies and this was in there and so I thought you know what I'm just gonna wing it I'm just gonna put it in here um right now I have it in a scroll rod because there's not enough room up here with how I cut the fabric to fit in a q-snap and I wish I would have thought about that before I cut it but I didn't um and so I want to get a little bit in before I put it on a q-snap I'm also looking for some better scroll frames I'm thinking of maybe making some myself because the ones that you get at Hobby Lobby or Joann's are the split rod and I freaking hate those they're so difficult to work with and so I'm thinking of coming up with some kind of a, my own system here or maybe just sewing some fabric on that I could put it in a q-snap that'll probably be better because I have tons of fabric anyway and putting it on a q-snap and so that's my teeny tiny little star I was doing it like 820 or something is what this color is and it looks fine I mean it's not affecting the way that the color looks at all in any way shape or form I'm doing it two over one so it's easy um and it's still gonna be a decent size uh 19 by 12 and a half is the stitched size of what it's going to be so 19 inches long 12 and a half up I feel like that's reasonable to go ahead and use that big piece of fabric and that was only half the fabric because it was over a yard it was like a yard and a half long and so um that was I only used half for that which is why I didn't leave any extra room to cut because it was half the fabric anyway there's that so that's a new start and then I also kitted up this chart from 
primitive hair. It's a freebie. I talked about this in my Patreon video or my YouTube join video, which is probably going up the same day this is going up. Um, it's the sister stitcher chart um, that me and Amy are going to do. So I'm going to do half. She's going to do half. She's been going through kind of a hard time lately. Um, her cat just passed away. And so I took it upon myself to go ahead and just uh, get this ready. I'm going to do the sister part and I'll let her do the stitcher part. Um, this is a freebie actually from the primitive hair. So if you go to their blog, you can find this on there. I didn't have any of the called for colors. So I went ahead and changed them all. Um, and then I thought about making it just more bright and colorful, but then I didn't. Um, this is the other piece of the 16 count earthen Aiden that I'm using. So once this is done, I will have no more, um, extra pieces of that laying around because of the reasons that I stated before, except I need to finish my Harry Potter project. So what I'm doing is for the hair, because I have super dark hair, I am using the Witching Hour from Gentle Art. This was one of their new release colors last year. And I'm also doubling this as the bobbin color here. I was gonna use white, but I felt like the contrast of the white was just gonna be too much. And then this is also the color of the stars um, on each side, I might change that, and also the color of the S. So I might change those to be one of these colors because these are a little bit brighter, one of the two blues. So the dress here for the bottom of my dress, I'm using Chesapeake Bay. By the way, I don't wear dresses. It's probably been three years since I've worn a dress. <laughs> And then my top part is going to be Deep Fennel. These are both by Classic Color Works. And then my skin color and the color of the thread on my bobbin are going to be Hint of Brown by Victorian Model. I feel like this is a good color because it doesn't quite match my skin tone, but I am a little bit darker. And so I thought this would be a good color. And then... um. It doesn't, let me see what color the skin actually is. Mocha brown, and then the color of the skin in here is beige brown. So, what color is the actual mocha brown? Oh, it has it on her waistband. Mm, I didn't feel like that. Yeah, it just doesn't need to be that. So, I substituted it for this. I thought this was a nice medium brown that I could use. I didn't really have much to choose from in the way of brown. So, I thought that in something without super hard variegation anyway. This has a slight variegation to it, but I think it'll be just perfect for my skin tone. Okay, so yeah, that's that. And then, um, maybe I will send this one to Amy if she doesn't have it to finish the letters. Um, and this ball just to both sides match we'll see i think she barely has it because she's like that <laughs> okay so there's that and then we'll just get into haul because um yeah i actually use these things that amy got me for my heaven and earth charts Then, I don't have much haul, and a lot of it was free. So, Nerdy Cross Stitch is doing a stitch along right now. <clears throat> uh, the word Nerdy, it's on Facebook, the Nerdy Cross Stitch Facebook group. And right now, they have these two, um, the N and the E have come out. I think she's only doing one a month if I'm not mistaken, so January and February. March is obviously the R, and then we'll see what she gives after that, but I'm super pumped for this. I'm going to, obviously I'm going to start it and then I don't, so I don't know, but I really like it, and I'm excited to see what the rest of it's going to be, because um, she takes a vote every month, like on what the next letter is going to be, and I'm just hoping that she keeps it classic, because some of the other stuff that they're recommending is just like Animal Crossing and things like that and I just, you know, I don't particularly care for those and so I just hope that it stays within the classic genre of nerd fandoms. Okay, then I finally downloaded the Linen and Threads 
charts. I got the frame downloaded, which is that. And then the, I didn't download the cover piece for the first chart, which I don't know why. Yeah, I like not. And then I did front and back on accident, which I never do on charts, but this is a free chart as well. Um, but the first one goes here. And then I didn't decide what colorway, but I do have two photos that I will put here and here so you guys can see. Um, the colorways that I'm kind of thinking of because they're both complete opposite and I haven't decided yet because I really like both but blue is my favorite color so I'm wanting to do the blue just because I love blue so much but the blue has a yellow in it and I don't like yellow so I don't know and then this um the I don't 100% 100% understand how this is supposed to work, but this is an overlapping circles chart, and I don't understand how the circles are supposed to overlap, um, because it's not already given, you have to do figure it out for yourself, but um, I'm part of Ink Circles Patreon, and this is one of the um, things that they came out with, so she's given us all of these, hold on. She's given us all these colorways, and it's supposed to be like overlapping in each. Like you can do a whole bunch of circles, however you wanna design it. Each one's supposed to overlap, but I don't feel like doing the math on that. And so I'm not 100% sure like how to go about it. I mean, I'm sure it's easier than it is, but without having to chart it out myself, I can't figure it out. Um, but I really like Teresa's or Belinda's colorway. I like Teresa's colorway and Jessie's colorway. Um, those are my top three favorite colorways. I just don't know. I think she's doing um, more on this. Um, I have to go through and read her posts again, but she talks about this quite often um, on Patreon. So if that's something you're interested in, you should check her Patreon out. It's very affordable and you get a lot of stuff. Um, this was also a free chart that I found on the Olafil website. It's a little Halloween quicker. A little quicker Halloween. I thought it was so cute. And it's small. Um, doesn't give... Oh, it does. Dang, these numbers are tiny. 100 by... 80 and that's a free chart on the Olafil website and what drew me to the Olafil website was this chart there's not a I'll put a screenshot here of what it looks like um, but it's the Joyu Noel or Joyo Noel chart and I saw this before but I was like, mm, I don't really care for it. It doesn't look that great. I don't think I want it. And then I saw it again on Instagram. Somebody posted it and I was like, you know what? I think I do want it. And I ended up downloading the whole chart. I don't know how many pages it is. It's nine pages, it appears to be nine pages. But it's charted. You're supposed to use the Aurifil colors. And it looks really nice. Like, on paper, it doesn't look as nice as it looks once it's completely done up, and I really liked it. So I went ahead and printed that out, and I actually am considering getting all the Orofil colors and doing it in the Orofil colors. Then the last thing that I got is, I can't remember her name. I will put it here. I saw this, I think it was in the Nerdy Cross Stitch group as well, but... Um, she was charting it and I was like oh that is so cool um, so I figured um, I put my name on the list like for her to notify me when it was available and she did and it's practically for free it's on Etsy when I got it it was the very first day that she posted it and I believe I was the very first sale um, and it was two dollars so that's practically free considering how hard she worked on this I don't know um, but it's, it says coexist 
and so you've got the Death Star here, and then you have the start one of the Star Trek ships in Star Trek, a Babylon Five ship. You have a Stargate, uh, Doctor Who screwdriver, uh, Farscape, and then you have did I say Babylon Five? Uh, Firefly, right here. And so I just thought this was freaking amazing. So when I was a little girl, my obsession with space and fantasy things started with Star Trek. I was probably between the ages of five and ten. I absolutely loved freaking Star Trek. And then somewhere along the line I got involved in obviously Star Wars and now I prefer Star Wars over Star Trek. But it's Star Trek was like the original for me and it started everything. And then um Doctor Who is my absolute favorite fandom. I freaking love all things Doctor Who. And so um, I have not seen Babylon 5, Farscape, or Firefly. But um, Farscape, I think, is either on Hulu or Prime. So I think I'm going to start watching that. And then Firefly is also on Hulu. Or one of them's on one, and one's on, one's on Prime, and one's on um, Hulu. I don't remember which, but I have them both. And so I really want to start watching those. Um, to see so yeah you know I'm pretty excited about this I just absolutely love the chart and it's pretty complicated I'm not gonna lie it looks difficult there's half stitches and fractional stitches um, tons of back stitching and so I'm pretty nervous going into it and I don't think I'm gonna start it anytime soon but I absolutely love it and that is it that is all my haul that's all um, yeah, you know, so it is what it is, uh, I have so many projects and so many things, I did end up, um, if you guys saw it a couple of videos ago, I was reorganizing my patterns, I got that done, so I gotta put all of these in there right now, and, uh, yeah, go from there, so that's about it, guys, um, oh, no, that's not it. The new issue of Just Cross Stitch came in. It is the April 2021 issue, and I was noticing something funny. So, in the back, you have this page that shows you everything that's in here. Every, as long as I've been getting Just Cross Stitch, they have one of these. And so, I was noticing something a little silly here is that this piece with the gnomes says it's on page 45 and when you come into the new issue this is the April issue this is the February issue is on page 45 if you come to pay the April issue it says it's on page 55 the same chart from um, autumn Lane stitchery but that is not what's on page 55 this is the one that's on page 55 it's actually this is page 54 but the chart is on page 55 so Oopsie, I don't know if they've corrected that or not. So, in this magazine, the charts that caught my attention are, originally, I didn't think I was going to like the my, Chris, Chris, my Quaker Christmas Sampler, but I think I'm actually liking it. So, this is parts one and two, had already been released, and I actually really like it. And I think that I have, if I started it now, I have plenty of time to catch up on it before the next part comes out, so I think I might do that. And part two is in the April issue, and part one is in the February issue, and so you need to be a subscriber to have access to it. And then page 15 has another one that I liked, and I, it's one of those two that I it's so not in my genre of things that I stitch, but I don't know why this is calling to me so much, but it is. I I really like it. It looks so pretty, and it kind of reminds me of a Chatelaine, but dumbed down. Like, this is just all regular crosses, not anything crazy like a Chatelaine would be, but it's still freaking gorgeous. The only thing is the chart looks freaking hard. Like, it's just the black and white charts. I struggle with those. And then 
I think that was honestly like the only things in here that I liked enough to want to stitch. Um, there's a cute cat chart in here on page 18, but I don't think I like it enough to stitch it. And it uses, let's see how they do it. It doesn't say, it uses, I'll tell you. It doesn't say, Treenway Silks. And I still have never heard of, the only other person that I've seen use Treenway Silks is, um, Michelle Bendy. And this person who charted this, I guess, owns Treenway Silks or something. But the red spiderweb is used with a silk ribbon. Or it's not red spiderweb. It's, it's what the color is called Crimson Glory Red Spiderweb Woven Rose. Um, it's the roses on there are used silk. Um, but I don't know. It reminds me of very Japanese. Ask, you know, does that make sense? I don't know. I think I'm just hanging out of my ass. And that's it out of this magazine. I didn't really care for anything else. There's several St. Patrick patterns in here and Easter patterns. I don't celebrate either holiday, so you know, it is what it is. So I think I'm gonna pull out these though and start collecting those so that I can just keep it together and not be I think this covers the whole uh, it just shows the I don't want the dogs are doing they're doing something that they shouldn't be doing oh oh I don't know what I'm doing so yeah and that's literally it oh I accidentally cancelled my Nest egg. Yeah, so what happened was I didn't see the first invoice and I saw the second invoice come in. It came in like sometime during the day and I was like, oh, I need to pay that. But I got a new phone and for some reason it's not picking up my saved Google cards. And so when I went to pay, um, it wasn't coming up on my card. And at the time, I don't remember, I think I was that was the time the day we were spending the night at my father-in-law's and I always leave my purse in the car which my father-in-law's house is you have to go out the front door out the porch gate because they have a gate there because of the dogs and then there's another outside gate and then you have to walk out of the driveway to get to my car and at night I don't like to go through all of that mess because in the area that they live is a ton of freaking dogs and um you know it's pretty loud and so I didn't pay it that day. Well, the next day, like 24 hours later, I got an email saying that she canceled it. So I was like, fuck. So I sent her an email right away and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. It was like, I didn't see the original invoice. I only saw the reminders or any way that um, I can pay this today. And she's like, nope, um, you know, this morning, whatever was the deadline and I already placed the order so I can't get you in. So I will not be getting my nest egg. And I was thinking about it and I was like, well, she said to go back in and apply again for March. And I'm just kind of like teetering on the edge right now of what to do because right now I'm not getting any clubs at all. Um, I canceled Black Mila Society. I haven't gotten Brandy's club in about six months. And all I had left was my nest egg. I canceled Victorian Motto two about two months ago. And so I only had the nest egg left. And I absolutely love classic color works as well. I love stitching with it. Um, but I don't know. And I'm actually reaching for my fancy floss more now than I ever have been before. And I still have a bunch of color and cotton that I haven't used yet. And I haven't used any of the dinky dyes I have. I don't have that many dinky dyes, but I do have quite a bit of color and cotton. Um, but between weeks and color and cotton, I'm actually really, really enjoying color and cotton more. I mean, between my wigs and my classic color works, I'm enjoying classic color works way more than any other fancy floss other than the MDA floss, but that's my opinion's bias on that. Um, so I don't know. I, 
I've kitted up a lot of stuff with classic colors. You guys saw all of the flosses that I've been subbing out in charts that I don't have the colors for because they call for weeks. I've been stitching with um, classic color works and it's not because I don't like weeks at all. I just don't have that many weeks and the weeks floss feels different from the classic color works floss. I don't know what it is, but the classic color works floss feels a lot softer than the weeks floss. Um, I don't know. That's just my opinion. But anyway. Um, that's it, you guys. Well, let's see what this is real quick, because it says something about the fabric. Fabric review. Let's see. Shares information on new and exciting products, but who? Rogue Stitching. Hmm. I'm going to check out Rogue Stitching and see what it is. But anyway, you guys, that's it. I'm going to go, because I talked way too much in this portion of it, and you got absolutely nothing out of it. So I'm going to check out Rogue Stitching and then I have to send out the, has my internet not connected? Oh, so I did choose people that were going to represent the Mystical Diamond Art Floss. Um, it's going to be Amy Sprinklestein, uh, Carla from Carla Being Crafty, and Annie from Joyfield Stitcher are going to be the three um, people who are going to be representing Mystical Diamond Art Flosses. Now, with the exception of Amy and Annie, um, they won't be getting the full set because Amy already has the full set. And so I think I'm going to give her a couple extras to do giveaways with. And the same thing for Annie. Annie's already had one giveaway with Mystical Diamond Art Floss. Um, Carla's going to receive a full set because she's never received any of my floss before. And Annie, I will send her the flosses that she has not received yet because I think she got the first three months of floss and so I will send her the months after that um, to go ahead and add to her collection and then every month they will receive the flosses in the mail and share them on their channel. So thank to you know thank you guys for um doing that, you know, going on there and representing offering to represent mystical diamond art. I truly appreciate it. Um, and I think that's it. I don't have any other admin things. That was all. And hopefully this video is less than an hour. I was aiming for less than an hour, but I don't think so because this clip alone is 20 minutes. So, whatever. <laughs> Alright. I'll see you guys in the next video.